Hi everyone. Hello. I'm so glad you're here. Today I really want to talk about knee pain and specifically knee pain with walking or hiking. So um, it's super common. It's like so, 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 so common to get knee pain, especially with hiking, super common with walking, but especially when we start to add that terrain, kind of uphill, downhill terrain, uh, the knee pain can really flare up and start talking to you. So um, the main thing I want to say is that if you've been experiencing this, um, it's not a death sentence. It can be remedied. It's super common. And there's lots of things to try before you just feel like you have to stop hiking or you're afraid that this is like a sign of decline, right? So um, thanks for joining me. My name is Linnea. I am a personal trainer and a Pilates instructor specializing in uh, therapeutic Pilates and functional biomechanics. Um, I have nearly two decades of experience. I am a retired circus performer. I used to have chronic neck pain. I've gone through many, many surgeries, uh, a few head injuries, um, a significant spinal injury, and all of that has really um, made me come back smarter and stronger and really more determined than ever to help others along their healing journey to be able to you know age with style and grace and live an adventurous life and know how to uh, take care of your body right i want you to know how to take care of your body in an, an efficient way and in an effective way so that you've still got plenty of time to do what you really love to do to go live your life to do all the other things that you want to do uh, so that's why i'm here that's what we're talking about today specifically knees and knee pain with walking or hiking um, so a couple points i want to make a couple things i want to touch on today uh, the first one is kind of it's a fun analogy right uh, it's sort of is like the knee is just stuck in the middle of this argument between the foot and the hip right it's just kind of in the wrong place at the wrong time the foot and the hip are getting in this big argument and you know ultimately the foot and the hip need to learn how to behave and communicate better most of the time that is going to be the solution so uh you know don't blame it all on the knee if you are consistently having knee problems then you're going to want to really look at what's going on in your feet really look at what's going on in your hips and kind of put the pieces together because it's very rarely just about the knee okay um and then from there if you don't already use trekking poles i highly recommend trekking poles and you do not need to be you know frail and wobbly and on the edge of falling over to use trekking poles um and if that is you then absolutely start using those trekking poles okay it's not at all um something to be embarrassed about something to be ashamed of i know many people that feel that way but i use trekking poles right like i love them and they create much more of a full body workout especially if you're going uphill you get a little bit of an upper body warm-up um, and workout you get kind of this core integration because you're getting work for the upper body you're getting work for the low body so then it kind of benefits by you know having all that energy transfer through your core so it's really great for spinal stability and core strength so trekking poles trekking poles are super awesome i highly recommend them and i know plenty of people that even you know use them for you know like especially if you've got like significant knee pain maybe there's a little bit more going on uh trekking poles just for taking your daily walk around the lake or something like that it's not a bad idea um and interestingly my last kind of point to make about trekking poles is that you might experiment with not using them when you're going downhill right downhill is like a whole conversation in and of itself knee pain when you're going downhill i could do a whole entire talk and tutorial just about that but the only thing i'll say about that right now is that trekking poles in my experience at least this is purely just my experience now this point is i noticed that they actually kind of create this sort of jarring impact right or it, the main thing we're trying to do is navigate gravity and have um we're trying to dance with gravity right 
if you imagine like a healthy spring, a healthy shock absorption, we want it to absorb the shock and then transfer the shock and absorb the shock and transfer the shock. And kind of worst case scenario, especially for the knees, especially going downhill, is if you don't have that elasticity of shock absorption, if it's just kind of like a big lock of calm and it just like impacts into the ground, right? And so my experience is using trekking poles going downhill when you're, you're naturally kind of speeding up because gravity is kind of pushing you down that hill and it's making you kind of want to speed up. And in my experience, the trekking poles kind of create a little bit more of that jarring impact and make it actually harder for me to find that kind of natural shock absorption going through my legs. Um, so, you know, try that out. Um, and then I want to maybe touch on one thing specifically for the quadricep muscles. That's like the front of your thigh bone, the, the muscles in the front of your upper leg. Um, those muscles, uh, especially closer down towards the knee, are really important for downhill. So if you don't have enough strength in the front of your thigh, as you're going downhill, that ability to kind of control that shock absorption, it's going to go into your joint a little bit more than having that shock be absorbed through your muscle, which is when the pain sets in. Most often that's when the pain sets in. So we want to have strong enough quadricep muscles so that that shock and that impact can be absorbed by the muscle and transferred out of the joint before that impact really starts to have a detrimental effect in the joint itself. Okay, so that brings me to my next tip for you all. Okay, and this is a big one. Like I remember, so I've grown up in a family of mountaineers. My mom and my dad were big time mountaineers. I was just hanging out with them for the past week and my dad was talking about for his 40th birthday, he ran a marathon, he was a ice climber. They just did incredible things. Um, and I remember getting in a conversation with my mom about kind of endurance versus strength because she was claiming that she was super strong because she did all this endurance work. Like she was a long time hiker. She would go on these epic long hikes. She was a you know super consistent walker. Even if she wasn't hiking, she would go on long walks every day. And then she did a lot of gardening. Um, which maybe gardening might qualify a little bit more as strength versus endurance, but that's where I'm going with this topic is this, this kind of idea of strength versus endurance. And if you're doing something like walking or hiking, that really, uh, strictly speaking, is much more about endurance than it is about strength. Yes, you're going to be building some amount of strength compared to sitting on the couch, but when we're really talking about the strength of your muscles to create a powerful and forceful amount of reaction at any given time, like if that's what we're talking about in terms of strength, then, you know, just walking where you're consistently repeatedly for a long period of time, putting one foot in front of the next, that's way more about endurance than strength. And so what this means is if you are somebody that is having knee pain when you're walking or when you're hiking, then you might be doing too much endurance and not enough strength training, okay? And they really are separate things. And I totally understand it because a lot of my walkers, a lot of my hikers out there, you guys like to be in nature. You don't wanna go into a gym. You're not really that interested in strength training, right? But so, and this might help motivate you because to understand and to have the knowledge and the perspective to understand that strength is going to give you the ability to maintain your endurance. If you focus a little bit more on strength training, it very well might help you, um, you know, just age better so that you can keep doing what you love to do uh, without as much pain and discomfort, especially as you age. So in terms of strength training, we want to focus on obviously the lower body, right? That's, this is again where I was sort of talking about those front of the thigh muscles, quadricep muscles, uh, that's really gonna help absorb that shock from the impact of each footstep that you're taking. Obviously, all of this applies to running as well. Uh, and just even more so, it's exponential as you start to run, the amount of impact, the amount of force, it just goes up, right? So we want strong quads, we want strong calf muscles, right? The ability to transfer that shock absorption and transfer that power, from your foot to your knee to your hip up through the rest of the body so that no one joint is kind of taking the brunt of that 
impact, but it's able to kind of move around and shift and create forward momentum without kind of getting just like stuck and jarred in one place, right? So calf strength, quadri quadricep strength, that's gonna be like kind of right at the top of the thigh, close to the knee, and then glute strength, which is like the back of the hip. So it kind of goes like back of the calf, front of the knee, back of the hip. Um, I mean, that's a sim simplification, but you can think of it kind of like that. Um, and though, that's really where you're going to want to focus a lot of your strength training efforts. Uh, but then on top of that, there is a, a kind of um, a role that the upper body plays here. So with all the time that we're spending sitting in front of a desk, in front of a computer, on our phones, etc., our upper body strength and our core strength really tends to suffer. So if you're somebody that sits a lot or works on a computer a lot, and you just jump up and go for a hike, there's a very good chance that you're gonna have a little bit more of a slouched posture and that your head is gonna be pushed forward a little bit of your body. And what that means is that that's actually directly putting more pressure and force through your knees. So if you don't have a good posture where you have the upper body and core strength to kind of hold yourself genuinely upright, instead of being a little bit like crouched forward or hunched forward or have your head forward, Right, like if you think of somebody that kind of shuffles around like a, a, a sweet little old lady or something like that, and they're kind of bent forward, um, that posture of kind of that kind of crippled forward, shuffly posture, it immediately has an impact on the health of our lower body and the impact and strain that the knees are taking. So that is why it's also important to do some strength training for the upper body and the core. Um, if even if your goal is purely to be able to hold, like continue to hike and walk for long periods of time. So I hope that gives you some really good perspective and some really good applicable ideas that you can start implementing today, tomorrow, this week, next week. Uh, just sit down, give yourself a little bit of time to uh, kind of identify what resonated the most for you in this little tutorial so that you can say, oh, that's, you know, my first step is going to be to get trekking poles or, oh, okay, I never thought of strength versus endurance. So I need to just kind of wrap my head around what it would mean for me to start doing some strength training. Um, right. So I hope that gives you some food for thought and something to start working with. And if you want more of where this information is coming from, then I highly, highly recommend that you check out my free guide. It's kind of an essential quick start guide. So this is gonna give you just a lot more practical tips and tricks for how to get started. If you're experiencing pain and discomfort, it might not just be in your knees, right? It might be in your back and your spine, it might be other places. So um, there's a link below, check out in the comments, the link below. This free guide is called Pain Free Over 50. Okay, so, and you know, most of my people out there, y'all are, pushing 50, over 50, I know it's not the same once you get into that age range. And so this is where we really want to start, you know, being attentive for how we're aging and doing it, kind of training smarter, not harder, right? So even if you're not quite 50, this is going to be a great resource for you. If you are 50 and above, this is an amazing, amazing resource for you. Check it out. Look at the link below. I can't wait for you to grab that and to hear what resonates for you the most. And in the meantime, happy hiking, happy walking. I hope you get out and have a beautiful time in nature today. And I will see y'all next time. Bye for now.